So at times we found people that are a bit apprehensive to leeches. They've gotten a bad rap in like horror movies and that's really not the case. Leeches have been used throughout history, you know, for different medicinal reasons. The amount of leeches used during different applications really varies on the body surface size and what you're trying to achieve by having them really um, draw the blood into their body from another part of uh, the human body. So if it's something like a finger, you might just see one on the tip. Um, if it's something like a leg, you could see you know, several of them applied at any given time. Uh, there are a lot of cases where a leech application is more beneficial than giving a lot of different types of medications. So when people are apprehensive about having a leech applied, I think it's important that they remember that a lot of times it's actually quite painless and the benefit from the therapy is, is better than you can get from other, other forms of medicine. Sawyer had Allergeal's syndrome and he needed a liver transplant because his liver had decompensated so badly that even at this early age, uh, just over a year old, he uh, really could not survive more than a month without a liver transplant. And really the life-saving gift of, of living donor liver transplantation allowed us to care for him uh, and get him through this, uh, this terrible disease. What happens uh, really in the immediate time is we have our donor teams from UPMC that evaluate the donor and went through dad's uh, assessment and tests and made sure that he was able to donate safely. And it, I talked to dad and of course he's so excited that he could be a part of the healing for his own son. You know, as soon as we found out that uh, Sawyer uh, needed the transplant and we, we researched the living donor, uh, there's a form that you fill out online and so you fill that out and you kind of put your background and uh, a few of your uh, statistics and so uh, when you, you put in your weight it, it gives you your body mass index. Initially mine was, was quite a bit higher than it needed to be and that was a little bit discouraging. You really want to do anything for your kids that you can. And so when I saw the, the body mass index that I would have to go to, it kind of it gave me that goal you know, really the, the desire to do, you know, anything for your, your kids. You know, you want to see them thrive, you want to see them happy, um, you want to give them every chance to succeed in life that you can, and, and this was that opportunity to do that. Ultimately, you know, to see, to see Sawyer sick and, um, you know, not doing well um, and be able to be a, a donor for him has been pretty special. We want to be able to give hope to all kids with liver disease and organ failure, and living donation really is a great way to give hope. And so when we have the privilege to be part of that healing, to get Sawyer back, we're really being a part of helping the family get back to enjoying their time together. And we're really privileged to, to be able to do that here at Children's House in Pittsburgh. When you look at the top causes of death worldwide, sepsis isn't on there. But infectious diseases are, and I know that when people die of infectious diseases, it's often because they're developing sepsis and we weren't detecting it. And so in order to actually make progress and improve those deaths and prevent those deaths, we needed to know what was going on at a global level. What we did is we took the Global Burden of Disease database and we used that along with more detailed, newer information to help us identify how many cases there are every year of sepsis, where those cases are, and which patients have sepsis. And then we looked to see how many of those patients die of sepsis. Our study estimated that there are 11 million deaths and almost 50 million new cases of sepsis worldwide every year as of 2017. Now that we finally have benchmark estimates in terms of sepsis morbidity and incidence for the entire world, for every age group, uh, every subpopulation, now we have a starting ground and we can start to really get to work in a more serious way in terms of reducing the burden of sepsis. And we have a metric that we can use and now update going forward year to year to help us understand our progress.